Hi everyone. Welcome to ONP Digital Designer, where we teach you how to create your own digital design pipelines using existing CAD and 3D design software. Going digital in ONP is a huge challenge these days, and a large part of that comes from the sheer education and software exploration that needs to be done by anyone looking to adopt all the technology they need to get into the game. 3D scanners, 3D printers, materials, software workflows, all of it is overwhelming when you don't know where to start. ONP Digital Designer takes the simple idea of helping ONP professionals with navigating the 3D design market and how it compares against some of the no CAD skills ONP design software that is coming out today. And no, before you say it, ONP specific software is by no means the blanket right answer. If you subscribe to our methods, you can save up to 90% of the upfront cost of starting your own solution, with no trial and error about how to get things done. What's even more appealing about investing in your skills over machines starting off is that you can leverage good design and take advantage of a vast digital network of additive machines and 3D printing already existing in today's market. So you don't even need to own a machine to get into the game. OPDD teaches the workflows by subject, by device, and by software, so you can learn the right way the first time and save yourself a huge headache. Check out our courses and subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks on how to take your digital workflow to the next level in your journey in going digital. Or schedule a meeting on our website and come talk design with me, Arthur Hobden. Now let's get stuck in with today's tips and tricks. Hi guys. So in this video, we're going to correct a 3D scan of a plaster cast and bring it into the world space and prepare this scan for uh, CAD applications or remeshing for different types of devices. So again, this is a great skill to have, being able to take a scan off in world space, correct it, modify it, clean it up, get it ready for product development and uh, changing your anatomy and your anatomy alignment is going to be a key part of that process. So let's dive in, start off by opening ZBrush and navigating to the uh, sample file in this lesson. So this is a uh, scan of a plaster cast of someone's foot. And, uh, you know, again, to, mod to navigate to that, you got to import uh, the OBJ, click and drag it on the screen, and then hit edit on your keyboard to bring up the editing space. Um, so alt, left click and drag is pan, letting go of alt is zoom. Left click and dragging with shift gives you your planar views, top, side, front, back, bottom. Um, and uh, if we want to turn on our floor, we can hit this button here and just even turn off the plane we can leave that on or off depending, but if I think the XY plane is the one that's going to be most relevant to fusion, but uh, we're going to just keep that off and just have a origin point as a reference. All right, so first things first is we got to align this. Um, so I'm going to hit W on our keyboard and using only the white triangle, the white circle rather, I'm going to start looking at this with shift, so holding down shift, snapping to one of my planar views, and I'm going to just try and align an axis up and down any axis that makes sense in the viewer. I'm just going to align. So looking at it from the bottom now, we're going to change this to look up and down. I'll look at it from the top. That's uh, pretty good. Looking at it from the side, this needs to probably be going back this way. And here, this is pretty, we're getting pretty close. Maybe you want to line up the foot first so we can, we'll, we'll modify the, uh, the calf to align the foot so it's planar. Um, something like that for the foot getting pretty close pretty close there we go now that it's the foot's been aligned in world space we can check with shift um, let's now hold down alt and reset our gizmo and uh, align this to the origin so just for say you know etiquette say let's make sure that's in the center of heel and uh, there is our first step of alignment uh, our next step is to uh, let's correct uh, the the leg so that it's standing upright. Now, in order to do that, we need to hold down control and mask away what we want to move. We continue to hold down control and uh, click a bunch of times on the part. We're going to feather that mask so it's nice and feathered. And depending on how we select the ankle, so if we sort of uh, go slightly into the ankle, past the ankle center, and then hit control a few times, we're going to feather right through the area we want to move. So holding down control, we can click off the part to inverse that mask. Hit W on our keyboard, and uh, I'm going to hold down Alt and position this gizmo inside the ankle. So holding down Alt lets me move the gizmo, but not the part. 
So with that sort of in place, for example, what happens if we just move this up like that? Yeah, from the side. What happens if we move this over? Not bad. There's a bit of a bump here, which is not accurate. That's okay. So what we're going to do there is uh, brush move topological, which is also here. Park that here for you, so you can click this button here to get this brush. This brush is a topological move brush, so we can sort of just using the size of our brush mostly to determine the, the space of the affected area, we can now drag that sort of back in just to feather out the poor result we got in the in the front. Um, this too, we can sort of see that this is being this is rotating. So um, depending on how you want to address that, there's different ways I'm sure that you can do that. Here I might feather uh, a selection of the foot and just try and uh, push this in a, in a space where I can correct that. There's so the ankle is like upright. There we go. Um, so the ankle's in a much nicer whoops, position. The forefoot now needs to be uh, changed. So what happens if I select the forefoot here and feather a bunch of times holding down control? Oops. Um, and maybe now I can change this. So holding down Alt, with this button here will go to unmasked, unmasked mesh center while holding Alt. So it'll bring your uh, gizmo right in line with where you want it to be. Uh, what happens here if I just sort of rotate this? Well, how does the result look? You know, not bad. Um, there we go. If you have a very high density mesh, uh, this feathering is probably not going to work. You're going to get hard lines. So if that happens, we can hold down control for masking, and then under an alpha, we can select uh, a gradient. So if you want to now you know, mask away an area, so the gradient you want from 100 to 0 to take place across this area, we can create a gradient first over a higher density mesh, turn this off, re-control apply at the bottom. Let's feather this result once or twice now. Now you have a feather that's much farther out, not dictated by your mesh density. So, so with that in place, we can sort of adjust the forefoot now. Make sure your first and fifth are like landing. And uh, you know, that's probably pretty good. Uh, next up. Let's flatten the sole, because this is, uh, you know, this should probably be flat, especially if we're sort of pulling an AFO or an SMO from this shape and want that flat bottom, right? So let's uh, control select floor plane, and uh, let's, you know, I've over selected right now. I can control, click on the part a few times, feather that back. Um, with that selection made, W on our keyboard to bring up a gizmo, Alt to bring it down to the floor plane. Control click off the part to invert our selection. Whoops, whoops, whoops. W on our keyboard. And uh, what happens if we flatten this? That, fe that feather is a little harsh. Uh, so we're going to try that again. So just bring it to the floor plane. Maybe I think it's like something like this, just like that. There, feather that once. Uh, bring this to the floor plane and then sort of bring that down. Mm, mm, alt. Like that. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. You can create a floor plane this way. Um, it's a better way to do this. Perhaps I need more density. So let's bring in our Dynamesh. You know, we're at 56,000 points. Let's bring this up to 400,000 points. Try this again. Because again, you know, look how sharp that image is now. And if I control feather this, it's going to move a lot less because my density, my mesh density is much that much higher. So if I bring my gizmo back in and I try and flatten this down to here, you know, that's probably pretty good. And uh, I'm going to feather that out. So it's, you know, holding down shift, I can blend the result here. Now I flatten the foot, but that doesn't account for, um, you know, foot expansion as a result of weight bearing now. So if I uh, change my RGB intensity, of my masking brush to, you know, something like 25% or something, I can go in and I can draw with my brush an area of influence. And again, this is based off of your rule set, not mine. I'm not a practitioner. I wish I was. But, you know, when you want to create a, a uh, foot expansion, hold down Alt, 
bring this to, you know, maybe the first ray, and then you can expand this out by 10%. And it's something like that that's nice and easy to do. Um, so once that's done, we've now really done a good job at modifying the foot, aligning everything, getting the heel nice and straight up and down. Um, maybe just for argument's sake, this could be a little over. Maybe you don't want to modify it that way. It's up to you. These are the tools. This is the workflow, how you spend time with a, a scan and you go through the process of cleaning it up, getting it ready for CAD. So I'm now happy with this part of the uh, process. The last part here is that we got to sort of clean up the front and maybe the top of the uh, leg scan here. So by holding on control shift, we can now select cutting tools, but instead of just, you know, control shift drag with alt, remove what I don't want. We can go a step further because that's just a, a slice to an open surface. So I'm going to hit control shift, click on this brush, and I'm going to go to trim curve, which allows me to quickly control shift, drag a curve and slice the top right off of this thing. Um, so what this allows me to do now is I can, uh, you know, and there's a group here now. You'll notice if I turn off my uh, line view here, there's the groups. So I can hit W on my keyboard, control select that group, and it masks everything away except that group. And now I can control click, you know, a bunch of times to feather that a bit. And now I'm going to bring that up to make up the difference for what I cut away. All right, so that's been stretched out a bit. Let's hit control, shift, and drag. And we're going to, that allows us to remesh what we've just dragged. Because look, look at this, you see this? That is like a desert of information because again, we only work on points. We don't work on anything else. Faces and lines and edges don't actually exist. All we work with is points in terms of like how our brush affects things. So you're going to get like weird results unless you control shift remesh and you're going to remesh all the density back into these areas. So with this in place now, uh, I'm going to sort of start trying to smooth out some of these uh, sort of scars from the process earlier. So I'm just going to hold down shift and drag. If you find it's not moving, you can remesh and continue the process. But up here, for example, we want to sort of round out this, uh, this calf area, let's say. So if you do notice something that you want to change, you can use your brush move topological button, or you can use your brush move elastic, or even just your move. Each one of these does something slightly different. So if I select that, uh, let's try sort of bringing this out a bit. You know, we can just drag that out right away. Um, just take different areas and just sort of build that out just so that our you know, our AFO or SMO, for example, isn't like biting into the shin unnecessarily. Um, in here too, we got to sort of try and blend this out or bring this back. So uh, if we use, uh, there's a clay buildup tool here, which we can sort of use to fill this area with, you know, some added material. Um, might be a little dirty to do here. Let's see. And if it's, you know, not giving you the right results, you can lower your resolution to make this a better process. So for example, we're at 398,000 points. If I bring this down, remesh down to 127, you'll notice that my smooth brush works a lot nicer. And that's because lower density means more, you know, effective control over your mesh. So now that we're at a lower resolution, you can really start to see how the smooth brush will actually really affect the results much better. So. Spend a few seconds here. Uh, another brush we can maybe look at is um, polish. So polish can sort of like just really brief, like and it'll take away some of the hard high edges, let's say, and then shift to blend that out. So something like this, I'd say that is well adjusted. Now let's quickly look at doing some clinical modifications for offloading and reloading on this model. Um, we can do that inside of ZBrush, or we can do that inside of Fusion, depending on when you decide to do it. So uh, one workflow is to just take a skin-spaced, as-is, an anatomical surface into Fusion and to work on your modifications there. The other option here is to do it inside of ZBrush. So uh, what we can do is by holding down Control, we can start to select different areas that we would want to offload or modify. So 
the uh, medial malleoli and well as well as the uh, distal third of the fibular head I think are two candidates for for this so we can start off by selecting those um, we can do the, the navicular at the top here uh, we can do the base of the first met as well as some you know something that we'd want to offload again I apologize for uh, these are off in any way but these are sort of you know the basics for doing this we're also looking for like the met, met, uh, the fifth met and then the uh, sort of the base of the fifth at a 45 degree angle so something like this these are sort of the major areas that you would want to offload or reload um, so what we're going to do here is quickly to select them and then we're going to uh, hold down control and click on the part a few times to blend those surfaces <clears throat> blend that selection sorry so we actually get uh, a nice feathering taking place and then if we uh, hold on control and click off the part we can now take that selection and we can inflate it we can move it and just sort of bump it out so if you want to see what how far this is going out we can um, at this point also duplicate the result so we're working on a duplicate and we can turn transparency on for the ones below so we can kind of see how much uh, we're we're giving in terms of distance but if we start to inflate this you can kind of see here you know that might be about two millimeters or three millimeters there and we can offload those specific areas and with that mask still selected we can even uh, you know grow or shrink that mask again and then uh, just shift to click with some smoothing to bring those areas you know to make them a little bit more uh, a little bit more smooth but there you can see it right away just like how much extra space that gives and some of that modification that's taking place that's an easy way to uh, to modify, and uh, you know at any point we need to go in and re smooth this down. We can as well, but uh, those are kind of the modifications that you can do with the smoothing brush tool and, and the selection tool by uh, just quickly selecting them, masking, feathering, and then you know inflating a selection upwards. So once we have something like that in place, we do have uh, everything we need to sort of move on to uh, the next session. So. I'll see you guys in the next video.